In a prior video, we went through Tech 249488 for preparing Windows 10 to run a sysprep uh, through the Go Solution Suite capture image task. And now we have our sysprep image and are ready to deploy it. Do keep an eye on Tech How to 111528 for the platform support for Go Solution Suite just to make sure that the version of Windows that you're then deploying is on the supported list as of uh, 3.3 GA where this recording was. We don't yet have support for build uh, Windows 10 build 18.09, but that should be coming soon. My testing today, however, is with uh, Windows 10 18.09, so hopefully we don't have any surprises. I think that uh, it should be good as there's not a lot of changes. We'll go ahead and add a new job here to my Windows 10 sysprep jobs. Call it deploy sysprep uh, win 10 18.09. Be fine. We will add to it distribute disk image. We will go out here and find my GHO. Okay, and we will check the box that says selected image was prepared using sysprep. So then we have to go in and take some changes here. So it is Windows 10 Enterprise. 64-bit and we're going to use the existing key but I'd like to show you something that we can do here to manage and have additional keys so if you have maybe different departments each having their own uh, volume license key we can use that uh, when we deploy out a machine to a specific department so I'm going to tell this OK and we're going to leave the rest of the options here alone and finish Let's go to Tools, and if we go into Options, under the Global, there are SysPrep settings here. Now under SysPrep settings, we can then, excuse me, uh, add additional keys. So not Pro, excuse me, let's go to my Enterprise. And I can then add uh, keys here uh, as I have them. So one example of an opportunity where we would want to add different keys is if we had a KMS server and we were not assigning a specific key but we were using the KMS server a key still has to be present and so we would then be able to maybe go to the Microsoft uh, document on the KMS client setup keys and then we could go to the version that is in question and grab the key uh, from this document and put it in here Alright, now a problem unfortunately in my opinion is we don't have the ability to label what this key is. So hopefully you're keeping track of what these keys belong to in a different location. But uh, for proof of concept here I'll show you. Here is a key that I've added and I will go ahead and go into my distribute image job and under my sysprep settings I now have this as a key for Windows 10 Enterprise. Now if I change to a different uh, version like Pro, then that key will not be listed because that key is filed as specifically oops, as specifically a Win10 Enterprise 64 key according to how I did my process. Now also it needs to be noted that the key that we choose here, whether it's the existing key that was in the image or a specific key from the list, needs to fit our version of Windows. So if we have uh, a key that is a volume key but our installation media was not volume installation media that key may not work even if it is for enterprise so the key rules that need to be followed are handed down basically from Microsoft because that is their OS and their process so we do need to be following that so any questions on key management or the process for what keys fit which versions need to be directed to Microsoft so I'll be using the existing key and we will discuss deploy anywhere at more length later but if I was deploying to similar that, to hardware that was dissimilar enough I would maybe then want to use deploy anywhere which is a ghost tool to inject additional drivers into the image after it's deployed and we'll discuss that uh, as I said uh, further in another video series but do know that uh, we can use that. So I guess if in doubt, push the image down without using Deploy Anywhere. If the machine does not boot up or does not connect to the network properly, then do come in here and use Deploy Anywhere as an option to 
try to get those drivers added in there. And if uh, they're still not added, then we can go through and add additional drivers to deploy anywhere. Uh, we'll be going over that in a later video series. So we will finish this job and I will go ahead and run it down to, let's see, this one will be fine. We'll go ahead and run it down to my 1703 system. That way we can confirm that it did successfully go all the way down. Here we go, we can uh, take a quick peek here from my MS info that my OS build now is 17763, which is uh, uh, Windows 10 <laughs> version 1809. Not sure why the build number and the version numbers don't match, but that's a Microsoft thing. Anyway, we can see that it uh, has updated. So let's take a look at a couple other things. Well, my system name previously was CL Win 10 170302, and that is. Uh, just because I gave it that name to keep track of what versions of things are. But because we pushed this image down to a known machine, it automatically gave it the name previously in our database. So kind of a neat thing when you reload a machine, it will then have the system's previous name if it existed in the, in the database. Now, if we want to perform a configuration as a one-off, we can right click and do a configure. And we can change our name then. Uh, we'll just go ahead and call this one 1809 because it is the second one I have. And we'll tell it OK and run this job. It'll reboot the client, rename it, and join it back to the domain. And because I have my, under tools and options, I have my synchronized display names with computer names. Once the inventory comes back from that machine, it'll then be updated here as the 180902, which lines up nicely. So if you change computer names and they don't necessarily update, come in here for program options and the global and see if synchronized display names is checked or not. Alternately, we could do a modify configuration on our deploy job and we could put in uh, computer names here. We could do a range of uh, dash 10, dash 18, and have a dash and have to start with 1. So my range, I'm going to go ahead and start with 03 because I already have a um, 02 in my range. So we're also going to have to join it to the EPM network uh, domain, excuse me. There we go. So next time I run this out on a machine, it will put down an image and it will then modify the configuration to 03, 04, 05, etc. Uh, so kind of an exciting way. So we can either right click and do a configuration or we can have a standalone configuration, modify configuration job, or we can uh, put a mod modify configuration job into a task. So be aware. We can do this in different ways depending on what's easiest for your environment.